the day. I've got the hammer in hand. Today I become an angel. Or a demon imp. They're pretty similar if you think about it. Dude, I'm going to be honest. I feel like physically drained from the amount of horror movies we watch through spooky season. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you convinced me to, to waive my selection of uh, Rosemary's Baby for something not horror. Just, yeah, need a little uh, palate cleanser. I think I was just like, I was just chasing that dragon. You know, I was <laughs> pupils dilated, freaking fiending for horror. And like now that I've got a couple couple day break in between me and the last horror movie I watched, you know. There you go. There you go. What's the last one you put, watched? Put the horror bottle down, Andrew. Um, oh, I don't even know. It was on Halloween night. I couldn't even tell you. Eh, it's all good. Yeah, it's all, dude, it was, that's what I'm saying, it's just turned into a blur. I, like, blacked out. <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, when, I, when I came to, my pants were by my ankles, There's fucking tissues everywhere, and every single horror film on Hulu had a fully watched completion bar on it. <laughs> <laughs> Bad. <laughs> oh my god that's all right <laughs> <laughs> oh so anyways glad healthy healthy choice to deviate away that's we, good well yeah. you know <laughs> that's not so dissimilar from my experience of watching ghost dog you know by the end there were some tissues <laughs> <laughs> happy tissues or sad tissues <laughs> Happy tissues, of course. Happy, happy tissues. Um, and if if they're lube, that's. I don't. Do they work? Does that work? <laughs> of course. We <laughs> pushing. That's what. That's not my experience. I don't. What. <laughs> But anyway, today's movie, Ghost Dog, I'm excited to talk about this one. Ghost Dog, The Way of the Samurai. Yeah, Is this cool not title. a cool movie? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is a cool movie. It's everything that like all high school me, this was like everything I ever wanted, right? And like, that's not like a detractor in the film. Just like I was into like weeby fucking, you know, mall ninja shit. At a, at a core level, you know, I think as many young boys like that kind of stuff. Uh, but it also has, like, Wu-Tang all up in it. Um, That's the thing. That's what I love about it. It's almost like the first film that brought that Wu-Tang world to life, you know? Wu-Tang and I style. think it's RZA's first film appearance, and it's got the badass hip-hop soundtrack, which I'm very much into. That the RZA did, right? And for the people who don't know about the Wu-Tang Clan, I mean, they're essentially a rap group that started in the early 90s that they are highly influenced by old kung fu and samurai films and, like, those soundtracks and kind of the music's infused with, like, that kind of synth. And Rizzo's really got his own style, as Jim Jarmusch actually called him the Thelonious Monk of (laughs) Hip-Hop, which I think is hilarious, but I kind of get it. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. He hits some, like, notes you don't expect, you know? Fuck yeah, that's a great quote. That's a great quote. And, yeah. um, but yeah, the soundtrack's awesome. And I was listening to the soundtrack, like, just aside from watching the movie, and it's freaking, it's RZA in his prime. It's pretty gritty hip-hop with all the Wu-Tang Clan-affiliated people. It kicks ass. And it's got the the Wu Tang guy who cut off his own dick, is on the soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know about that guy? Yeah, um, man, haven't heard that reference in a very long time. But yeah, so so he was in the Wu Tang affiliated uh, group North Star, which was a duo. Christbearer mm. is his name. And, I mean, this is kind of a sad story, but it's really interesting. I guess in 2014, he cut off his dick and jumped from an apartment building 
trying to commit suicide. And um, then he didn't succeed. No, he didn't. Well, he succeeded in cutting off his dick, but apparently they were able to successfully reattach it. Well, that's good, I I think. His his track's pretty good. (laughs) So listen to this quote. He was on the Hamilton's Pharmacopoeia show. Have you ever seen that? Mm Mm-hmm. And here's what he had to say about PCP. Oh, boy. (laughs) This is an amazing quote. PCP is something that can alter reality. It's like knowledge. You can see something, and once you see it, you can't ever go back. So that night I had some PCP, and I was watching some cartoons. And to me, for some reason, life turned into a cartoon. And I had three baby mothers, and they all had restraining orders against me, so I couldn't see my kids. But I figured, man, I keep on having these babies by these girls. I was just thinking they're kind of groupies, but then once they have all these babies by me, I'm trapped. And essentially just decided that his dick was the cause of all his problems because he kept having these children, which is actually kind of irrational (laughs) in a weird way. Like, if that really is causing all your problems, like you're addicted to like unprotected sex with groupies or whatever i'm not saying that's the answer but maybe maybe have a vasectomy (laughs) that's 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 the more reasonable conclusion there i think sir yes didn't go all theon Greyjoy on yourself Mm, yeah exactly um so that's dark but the soundtrack's pretty good (laughs) Between each song, it's got the Haga Curry quotes that are mm-hmm. in the film. I mean, I guess let's just go ahead and say what Ghost Dog kind of is, like in a nutshell. It's this African-American guy who lives on a roof in the big city, and he practices his samurai sword up there, and he lives by the way of the samurai. <laughs> Based off this knowledge that he got from this book, the Haga Curry, which was written in the early 1700s, which is basically like the code of the samurai at that time. He's kind of a, his own weird character out of time and place, <laughs> yep. living by his own forgotten code that no the world does not operate on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just like <laughs> his his character, you know, backstory or whatever is like literally every like basement dwelling... <laughs> You know, I studied the blade, uh, neck beards on the planet. It's like wet dream, you know, like <laughs> they're getting their ass kicked by a bunch of like neighborhood ruffians about to be beat to death. And a, a cry boss comes in and breaks it up. And as such, you become indebted to him, you know, it become, <laughs> become his blade. That's <laughs> Dude, right? Oh my god, yes. I mean, there's there's a big element of that. The, the only right difference here. is instead of like a 350 pound neck beard, you know, we've got Forrest Whitaker, who's like... Who's a badass. <laughs> who's a badass and like a pretty big dude in like a, you know, menacing kind of way. Not like pretty big dude in a immobile without a rascal scooter kind of way. And yeah, I mean, but anyways, it is like... I, I see the appeal. I see the appeal of the Forrest story. Forrest Whitaker was perfect for this role, though. And I feel like I, in middle school, specifically, I was kind of like an outcast kid. So I had to hang out with the other outcast kids. And I knew <laughs> ghost dogs. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like the kid who has like the Walmart shirt that's black with like the flames on it. And he studies Japanese. Yeah. But then you've got your... animes. you got your juggalos. You know, you've got... I know what you're talking about. Yes. I mean, these aren't exactly <laughs> juggalos. They're nerdier and more... I know. I, I was just... I was making mention of another group of... Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, I could see how those could be rival factions. They're sharing the same table at lunch, you know? Well, like... yeah. yeah. And I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was there <laughs> with my stupid fantasy books. But, yeah. I mean, so I knew people who, like, almost were Ghost Dog, and I was friends with them. And, you know, when we got to be 14 or whatever, they bought fedoras, and I didn't, and we just parted ways. Yep, that's, well, you made a good play call there, you know. (laughs) But, dude, I want to be Ghost Dog. 
I appreciate his minimalistic lifestyle. I do, but there's also something that's almost like taxi driver-ish. Uh, there's an element of <laughs> like a guy who's like gone insane. Yeah, I mean. And befriended a little girl. And definitely, <laughs> you know, I could see him d doing some Travis Bickle shit. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, you know, a certain percentage of the weeb population is just like prone to this kind of insanity <laughs> or at least like inability to socialize normally i mean ghost dog i hate to just keep ripping off and ghost dog because ghost dog is the man this I movie is have sweet. nothing but respect for ghost dog yeah, but he is discipline. kind of does remind me of someone who might say m'lady and like tip his hat you know <laughs> 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 but he's the man, like, and I have I respect those guys in their own weird way. <laughs> I just like as can't. long as they're not like harassing people with that shit. Some of them do, though. A lot of them do. A lot of them do <laughs> harass. Uh, and I respect people who collect sword. I have a sword that's that I pretty like sweet. a lot. I wish I had a sword. Fuck, I want I want more swords, you know. And I was that little kid who was like trying to buy ninja stars in uh, <laughs> the shop in the mall. Yeah, I had some nunchucks at one point. Oh, that's fun. I thought they were so badass. I could like <laughs> I could like whip them around my shoulders, and that was it. And you know, like half the time, I would clock, clock myself in the balls or whatever with them. Just pop. That'll happen. They're dangerous, man. It's a dangerous. They weapon. are dangerous. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so Ghost Dog in this film lives by the Haga Curry, which is again. This book from the 1700s, and a big tenet of this book is you basically have to be ready to die at a moment's notice to like fulfill your duty. And I guess this aging samurai who wrote this book, he was a retainer, which means basically you're a servant to another samurai your whole life. And yeah, so Ghost Dog becomes this mafia guy's retainer, so he's his servant because the guy saves his life or whatever. Which is just not enough. Like, you know. <laughs> and there that is, there's a lot of just weird stuff going on in this movie. Um, you know, you got this weird mixture of like mafioso and hip hop and samurai culture. Yeah, that's like, you know, I mean, there are a lot of like Italian mobster stereotypes they lean into in this film. But like, they, they also have like the little like weird twist on it that... Um, Oh, hell, what's the guy's name? The one who likes to dance and he, he likes public enemy and stuff. Uh, yes, um, that character, Sonny Valerio. Yeah. Who gets, he gets the best kill, I would say. I, yes, we'll get to that, though. Can't We can't blow our load on that right yet. That's true, that is true. No nut, no nut November. I Ooh. found the gangsters to be a little goofy, kind of, you know. And Jim Jarmusch, he's he's kind of like an artsy director. He's not necessarily one of my favorites, but I do enjoy several of his films. Um, I really I like Down by Law with uh Tom Waits. I have not seen that one. Oh, dude, it's fucking sweet. I'll have to check that one out. Yeah, you should definitely check it out. You will like. I definitely will. I'm a huge Tom Waits fan. But I did enjoy Coffee and Cigarettes. See that one? Yep. I mean, even if... Just the idea of like putting Wu-Tang together with Bill Murray is brilliant. And kind of similar... A little bit similar to Wes Anderson. Bill Murray is a mainstay in many Jar Jim Jarmusch films. Or at least two, I guess. Have you, have you seen Dead Man? I have seen Dead Man. That was quite good and artsy and weird. Yeah, pretty young-ish Johnny Depp. It's the kind of film that's in filmed in black and white for no reason. Yeah, I mean, so is Down by Law. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> Broken Flowers, did you catch that one? I have not seen that one. That's like an aging Bill Murray who's like a bachelor, and I think he like receives a letter that he finds out that he has a kid, but he's not sure which ex-girlfriend it is, so he like goes and meets every ex-girlfriend he ever dated i have heard of that i've not seen it it's pretty good i really enjoyed it i mean it's got a weird jim jarmusch pacing you know well that's fine 
That's fine. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, Ghost Dog also has that pacing. It's worth pointing out there are chunks of this film that are just music videos and like not even that interesting of <laughs> music videos. It's just like Ghost Dog driving around while Mastakilla plays or whatever. Yeah. Or him, or him doing narration over him, like practicing <laughs> mall ninja moves on his rooftop. <laughs> so. One of the best like compliments I ever got, I don't know if it's a compliment is the right word, but when I lived in Taipei in Taiwan, I lived on a rooftop in a little shack on a rooftop. And when I told my friend about it, he was like, oh, like Ghost Dog. And that's when like I made a connection with Ghost Dog and forever Ghost Dog will have a place in my heart. Thank God there weren't pigeons. <laughs> Thank fucking God. But like my kitchen was literally like outside on the roof, like under a little awning or whatever. <laughs> so like rats and shit. <laughs> the reason the reason we're doing this is because Brayden used to live on a roof. <laughs> that's we, literally why. That's no, literally why. That's what led us to this moment. I wanted to believe I was Ghost Dog. And did you? I mean, did you ever do any, like, practice martial arts or even just, like, yoga, like, up there on the rooftop? Um, that's no, like a, but that's I That's, like, an easy, a like, life movie scene you could have, like, done, you know. So Dude. when the light, when the lights are clicking out for the final time and you get to see your, like, fast, fast forward that's to true. your life. Have that scene just be part of the Dude, montage? Yeah, like, you know, <laughs> channeling your energy. Meditating on the roof. As the sun rises fucking yes. over the horizon. Uh, sadly, you fucking... I mean, you know, I did other, I had some good times on that roof. Let's just put it that way. But, uh, I also had weird intrusive thoughts about throwing myself off the roof, which were a little bit concerning. I mean, I think that's like people, people call that the call to the void or something like that, which is a phenomenon when people are up high or like near tall ledges they feel like there there is an inner compulsion telling them to jump i think it's my terrible. body just reminding me or my brain reminding me that like that is a possibility don't well, do that that's like the whole thing of it right is it's like otherwise completely non-suicidal people feel this compulsion or this like you know something in their ear probably a, a demon or like aliens now that i think about it telling them to mm, jump mm, um i experienced it even though i was a very very happy <laughs> time of my life and was not suicidal in any way just i mean this is a weird little tangent but uh in new at nyu allegedly there's like a section of like the library or something where a bunch of people have thrown themselves to their deaths and like mm. part part of the lore behind it is like people have claimed that like they'll be like looking over the edge and they'll see like the you know the tiling or whatever on the floor rearranged and say like do it or like jump holy fuck yeah evil buildings pretty cool Damn. pretty spooky but yeah, I liked it. Thank again, thank God there. So, Ghost Dog keeps pigeons, which is just disgusting. <laughs> it's disgusting. It is. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. What is up with these? Like, and I mean, he's also kind of, you know, it's implied it he doesn't have any income and just lives up there for free, and is essentially like a homeless guy who has pigeons on a roof. You know. Yeah, you want a bunch of street city pigeons fucking shitting their you know parasite laden poop all around your living area dude awesome. i've i've just <laughs> sat around and watched the pigeons they're disgusting horrible animals the fattest male will just go around raping all the other ones <laughs> and they just, i think there's a like, lot of that in the animal kingdom but there is there is of course but uh it's brutal man but yes and so Ghost Dog only communicates with his mafia connection via pigeon. <laughs> and so he sends him messages. With yeah, the like pigeon. a messenger bird. Also, Ghost Dog, here's another strange thing about him. His only friends are this little girl and this guy who only speaks French who's an ice cream man. And he meets up with them every day. And uh, he's also giving this little girl books, which I think is, if I was her parents... And she came home with a book some homeless man gave her called Ghost Dog. That would be a wake up call that I like. I should probably start paying attention. Yeah, I should be more involved as a parent. <laughs> That's concerning. I, this was I... a different time, but like it was also. <laughs> I mean, 
even back then, this would have been a little concerning. I mean, if I saw it was Rashomon, I'd probably be like, okay, you can read that. But I want to meet this guy. <laughs> I want to know who this person is. I mean, I brought home weird stuff all the time, and my parents would get mad at me. They got mad at me because someone at school gave me Chinatown. <laughs> It's not even that bad of a movie. <laughs> now I have a podcast about films, and I got in trouble multiple times for like having films that like either they just didn't understand or didn't think I should have. Another time was Annie Hall, the Woody Allen. Yeah. Which, I mean, Woody Allen is a creep, but... He is. And Roman Polanski's a creep, too. But Chinatown is like... A... <laughs> yes, they're both creeps. China... Yeah, it's a lot of it, but... uh uh-huh. Some pervert gave you this in the park. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, I wasn't being groomed. It was just my friend at school. I don't think Ghost Dog is grooming her. I no, think... he's not. But it's I... a strange relationship. It, think... it raises an eyebrow. I think he's uh, too wrapped up in his samurai way of life that to ever talk with women. No, that's for sure. I mean, he's totally celibate. He's a monk. Yeah, he's a vol cell, a voluntarily celibate. Which is like another kind of strange thing about Ghost Dog. He's almost presented as like this enlightened monk who studies Eastern philosophy and lives on this roof. But he's also just like a hired goon for the mafia where he is a paid assassin, essentially. Yeah. And another thing about Ghost Dog that I found interesting... So, like, I just love the concept so much, and I love the Wu-Tang soundtrack. The Wu-Tang style. But, like, for me, I just wish he had gone around fucking people up with the samurai sword more, you know? It we seems like all the kills are actually with guns. Yeah, we didn't get nearly enough samurai action. No, I want to see him literally... I mean, the choreographed samurai training part looked awesome, but I want to see him fuck everyone up with that sword. That was an ex- so much. <laughs> that was an expensive bit of choreography back then, friend. You know, I believe it. I special believe effects. It. This was a uh, much more practical from a budget standpoint. Speaking of which, the budget hat for this film was about two million dollars, and it grossed just under ten. Not bad at all. No. I mean, you're basically quintupled your funds for a film like this. It's like pretty, you know, unique and. Uh, I mean, like, I, I, I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't have it's an indie film. It has a, an indie vibe for sure. Yeah, exactly. It's not trying to be mainstream or hit those cinematic beats of you know the big blockbusters. Yeah, it's not an Avengers film. It, it leaves you just with a hip hop beat for like ten minutes with no dialogue. <laughs> we do. We do get a similar edge scratch with Blade, though, right? Like. Which one? Blade. I rewatched. Bl- yeah, like the trilogy. Oh yeah, yeah. It's. Have you ever like read any of the behind the scenes stuff about the Blade trilogy, like Wesley Snipes, onset behavior and stuff? No. Apparently, he'll just like lock himself in his. Or I guess by the third one, he was just locking himself in his trailer with like ounces of weed and like refusing to come out. And every <laughs> in every scene he shot, he was just like stoned out of his mind. That's kind of hilarious. And like an asshole to everyone. <laughs> I don't. I don't like people being assholes. But no, that is... that's not. That's not the fun. Funny part. But. <laughs> Him, him locking himself away in trailers getting high and probably deeply paranoid to the point of <laughs> not letting people in that's kind of funny to me also i like um chris christopherson a lot you know outlaw country guy he's the old man it's true i do like chris christopherson he's fun but no i haven't seen those blade movies in what's a his, long what's time. his name weaver is that his fucking name in the I can't movies. remember. I think it's weird. But what, what was your... You were just making the comparison of different movies of black guys with swords? Uh, specifically samurai <laughs> swords. Uh, so don't don't you flip that shit on some, me. Some nerd out there is going to be like, uh, technically Blade does not carry a samurai sword. <laughs> he probably doesn't. <laughs> he just, definitely doesn't. I, I can picture what it looks like right now. It's like a katana. It's like a katana. 
I don't know. Mm, Email bet. us at fireoutflixpodcast at gmail.com if no, you're an I... expert in Japanese swords and what have I if done? you have studied the blade, God damn it. <laughs> send us a message. Yes, I'm sure please. I got a lot of this Japanese stuff wrong. Send us a message. Let Tell us me how dumb I am. It. I don't care. But yes, that's what I was talking about. <laughs> I get it. I get it. You're right. I should feel shame. Um, I mean, how many are there of black black people with swords? I'm not. I'm. I think it's underrepresented. I would like to see more. The only one I can think of is the the guy in Venture Brothers. Who okay. Like works with Doctor Orpheus or whatever. Wasn't there like Afro Samurai? I mean, they're, they're animated. There's a few more. Ooh, yeah, that's true. But, Af- um, Afro Samurai is so fucking sweet. I mean, I would like to see more. I'm a huge fan of like this Wu Tang aesthetic. And I mean, at the end of the day, Wu Tang and RZA, he's just like a big old nerd. <laughs> he is a big old nerd. Even though I will say the FBI has labeled them as a gang organization called the WTC organization <laughs> the Wu-Tang Clan organization yes. and several like freedom of information requests have unlocked these files that they were like following the Wu-Tang Clan and trying to prosecute them under like RICO acts and stuff that's pretty wild <laughs> and that in in the released FBI documents they say that like in their crime organization, lower level members who do, like did a lot of jobs for them would get record deals. Mm-hmm. That's how they would pay people. I mean, kind of. That's how you moved up in the organization and eventually become a member of North Star or Killabees or whatever, allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> you get signed. <laughs> Which, I mean, there are... I mean, we both know there are some members of Wu-Tang who can't rap at all <laughs> this is true out of like the 60 members or whatever i mean hey at least you have a career path laid out in front of you from day yeah. one you see the route that's better than a lot of employers you know there's do they no, have that's a, true do they have a training program i mean i hear the wtc organization offers a nice pension full benefits full bennies full bennies <laughs> No cost if you're not married. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. No. But yeah, I mean, Ghost Dog, at the end of the day, he kills everybody. The mafia kind of turns against him. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, the whole thing is he kills a made man who's banging a boss, like, boss's daughter. And basically, like... He lets her live, so she sees his face and shit. So he's made at this point. So the other mob bosses to cover their tracks, and not be implicated in the murder of this made dude. Dude, you ghost dog. You got to kill all the witnesses. Come on, what is this? Yeah, she's like we, a is this young our first? Woman. Is this our? Are we new here? He he fucking uh, inceled out and let the well. Live. He has he has a code. Okay. He clearly has a code. I mean, it it's a very strange code that involves just killing people because you're being a contract killer or whatever. Who knows if these people are innocent or what? I mean, I think if they're in the mob world, probably like very few of them are innocent. I'm sure there's just some guys that are like, you know, they've gambled away their entire family's life savings. <laughs> and, and they're coming up zero and they're going to, you know, have their hands broken or maybe a bullet put in their head if they're in too deep. Um, All right. What do you think? What do you think the kill threshold is? Like how much do you have to owe to the mob for them to kill you? I mean, I think it depends, you know, they're trying to send a message prop, maybe as low as like a thousand dollars or a few grand. That's pretty low. I mean, you know, you can't just have people steal from you. (laughs) You have to make a quick example out of those people kill yeah. who knows you know but uh i mean I what think do i know about fucking that's except, fair that's fair except all the movies I've seen all the movies and i will say this is one of the goofier like portrayals of <laughs> the mob i would say like ten thousand. that's my my guess number wise 
before that they're just gonna fuck you up bad but yeah i enjoyed the shit out of ghost dog me too um, i think it's one th- you'd think ghost dog would just have bitches lined up for miles that's one thing that i thought was um you know factually yeah. inaccurate about this film Dude, nothing, nothing is more off-putting to a woman than like wielding, <laughs> than wielding a katana in like modern day, day-to-day life. Like than that's... holding, than holding the door open to them and tipping your hat and saying "Milady." That's yeah. Whisking them away on some fairy tale adventure. Yeah, I'm sure that's what all of them want. <laughs> in the world of Warcraft. Asterisk. Asker, asterisk. <laughs> uh, I think that is Azeroth as the world of Warcraft, but you know. Um, technically, technically, it's there's multiple worlds. <laughs> and technically, I choose not to engage with women. <laughs> I mean, that's Ghost Dog's deal, right? It I is. think he's in. He is not an incel. He's a voluntarily celibate. That's our big joke this whole episode, folks. Ghost, ghost dog, don't get no play. That's ghost dog. People, on that, it's a, it's on a short note, one, but unless you got anything else. There's, I mean, we, we hit all the plot points, man. This is, my, this is our rebound episode after doing horror movies for a month straight. Probably I longer. mean, <laughs> I feel like this might be like Forrest Whitaker's best performance. Jim Jarmusch wrote this movie for Forrest Whitaker, and I think it was kind of a collaboration from beginning to end. And uh, bringing in Riza and all that was genius. And I would say this film has a very unique tone to it, which... He was also in the the crying game before this, and that was a pretty big deal. I mean, he was the side character in a lot. I think he was in... Which one was it? Um, he's in, he's Fast in the Times last at Richmond of, High, even right. The Last King of Scotland. He wasn't that. Yes, Fast Times. I think. Uh, the Last King of Scotland was later. But I mean, he's. I mean, he's a yeah, very was, talented actor, and I totally believed he was an incel in this one. <laughs> and so, <he's>, I mean, <laughs> and, and repo men with uh, with Jude Law were there. People who repo organs. Nice. Riz is in that one too, actually. As Bobby Digital. Is that like Garth Brooks' alter ego, Chris Gaines? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Where he cosplays as uh, that stupid fucking emo magician guy, Chris Angel. <laughs> Chris Angel. Oh, man. <laughs> he does kind of look like him, doesn't he? That was a weird time. That was a weird time. Weird choice of wardrobe to say the least i guess it made him hard to to recognize so yes also another fun fact is have you ever heard that there was actually a black samurai guy i have heard that before i can't remember his name but there was like an african guy who like made his way to japan in like the 1700s or whatever and like they totally accepted him and made him a samurai pretty cool that's pretty fun yeah that's pretty fun yasuki yasuke that was the black samurai guy and of course we had a white samurai um with tom cruise tom cruise last samurai yeah Uh, and then again like in you know run down mall parking lots everywhere across america um (laughs) every flea market there's at least one white samurai at least one (laughs) I promise you, he has like Ninja Star, Shuriken, you know, fucking everything you can think of other than maybe a pole arm in the trunk of his Honda Civic. He has studied the blade till it can be studied no more. While you were out partying, I studied the blade. <laughs> that meme is hilarious. I mean, it's as old as time at this point, but. It's so good. <laughs> it did. It, I studied the blade. It's it just strikes some notes. Every like almost everybody in America, one way or another, kind of relates to that. Meme. Well, you know <laughs> that guy. You <laughs> know knows that, that guy. guy. Or and you I are mean, that guy, and, you're, and you think it's kind of badass. <laughs> I kind of admire that guy. You know, I I I wish I studied the blade, and 
you know, to the to the really weeby people out there, like n- study Japanese and know all about samurai culture. That's badass. I'm also a nerd. I'm not gonna, you know. I'm not gonna go all out with it. <laughs> I'm not going to go all out with it. <laughs> Where's your where's your threshold where you cut off? Is it is it the waifu body pillow, or or is it the complete <laughs> refusal to use deodorant in any way, <laughs> shape, or form? Is it? <laughs> I didn't get the savant part <laughs> where I'm like a, a Japanese historian who studies the blade. I just didn't. No. I mean, you I just... did a little taekwondo. <laughs> No, no, he just made me socially and emotionally stunted. Um, <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I was at least socially aware enough to know that maybe that wasn't, even if I had some interest in that. I think it's just such like a, it's like a moment in, in many young people's lives, right? Where like, because for a bit that stuff is cool to like every like little boy just about, right? Like Dude, every... we grew up with Ninja Turtles and yeah. Power Rangers and all that shit. Yeah, it was, it was, <laughs> pretty, it was pretty sweet. It's all about it. And then one day, <laughs> one for, day for ninety percent of the population, the switch flips, and they're like, "Oh, should probably put some distance between me and this stuff in public at a minimum." You know, like it's the day you notice your first pube, and you're like, "I have to renounce that life now." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you are one of our younger listeners, and like maybe you're still playing with it, I'm. There's nothing wrong with it, as Brayden has said so many Playing times. Playing with it? Which part? Playing with the, the, the fucking mall ninja weapons. Oh, uh, oh yeah, that's nothing I'm just, wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with it, but I'm just giving you some advice. Most women aren't into that, right? Like that. <laughs> you and your friends could do that. I, I, I have had friends who are like just total chads, extremely good-looking guys, who have extreme nerd hobbies. They just like don't bring that into the social setting of like trying to get a date or whatever you know like but there are some incredibly beautiful like cosplay women at these i mean i haven't really been to a comic con or anything but there's hot nerd chicks out there dude but they're also and maybe just... one will be very impressed by your mastery of bushido dude and... they all they all have like super hot nerd boyfriends right like they're <laughs> right they, they yeah, have their, they have their fucking pick of the litter all right and that's true you know I, you got to know that going into it, right? So, <laughs> you, like, know. you know, that, that famous cosplayer probably doesn't want to, like, go out to the parking lot and look at your swords in the trunk of she your car. She probably doesn't want you to DM her. No. But that doesn't mean you can't meet a nice other lady. And, like, maybe she's into this cool shit with you, too. But, like, just slow roll it, right? You know, maybe don't <laughs> don't show off the ninja stars on the first date is all I'm saying. Anyways, this conversation is derailing so quickly. Like, subscribe, comment, tell a friend. Let us know that you appreciate it. We got some more fun stuff coming up in the, the subsequent weeks. We're we're in the holiday stretch at the end of the year. I, for one, I'm actually kind of dreading like all the Christmas shit. But we're going to make it fun and we're going to make it far out for our listeners. So, get ready. Pucker up. <laughs> pucker up. Pucker up. Dude, that's, that's the show's new tagline is pucker, pucker up. up. Pucker up. Oh, I like it. I like pucker it. up. Far out place. <laughs> pucker up because we're coming. Yeah, we're coming. <laughs> <laughs> coming to a town near you. Pucker up. Oh, man. All right. Troy, we miss you. We miss you, Troy. Troy. Keep keep Down on there. puckering up. Puck. What? You bring Troy into this? I did, I did. <laughs> not, the, not the pucker conversation, just Troy. <laughs> I was just missing Troy. I was missing Troy and it came out. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, that's it. Later. <laughs>